After midnight, 6 June 1944, the night sky over Normandy suddenly erupts with anti-aircraft fire and flares and waves of Allied planes flying overhead. It's the start of a day that had been coming for years, the longest day, D-Day. More than 13,000 American paratroopers of the 82nd and 101st Airborne Divisions began dropping from C-47 transports, descending into France and an awaiting German army. For the men of the 101st, it would be their first taste of combat. The early hours of D-Day proved even more chaotic than planned. Intense anti-aircraft fire and coastal fog forced the paratroopers' planes to break formation, causing most to miss their drop zones. Scattered across Normandy, their first challenge was to find their units. 1,500 men were killed or captured in early combat. Still, the men persevered and by nightfall had secured the beach exits in their zone for the Allied troops that had landed at nearby Utah Beach. Among the men who jumped into Normandy was Edward Shames, a young sergeant who was soon promoted to second lieutenant, the first NCO in his battalion to receive a battlefield commission. He was transferred to Easy Company in the second battalion of the 506th, where he took charge of its third platoon. While the Normandy invasion proved a success, the 101st suffered serious personnel and equipment losses. The division returned to England for refitting, replacement, and training before being called upon to jump again into Holland for Operation Market Garden, September 1944. The ambitious plan aimed to drop paratroopers throughout the Netherlands and secure vital bridge crossings while ground forces raced up from behind, plowing a route into Germany and ending the war by Christmas. In heavy fighting, the men of the 101st secured their targets, liberated the Dutch town of Eindhoven to the locals' great joy, and held open the route north. Despite early successes in Market Garden, the Allied forces were stretched thin, and after heavy German counterattacks were forced to withdraw, hopes of a quick end to the war and a return home by Christmas were dashed. Instead, the men of the 101st would spend Christmas 1944 in a much different place. 16 December 1944, the German army, reeling but not beaten, plows west into Belgium through thinly held Allied positions, launching a final massive offensive that would become known as the Battle of the Bulge. A key German objective was the Belgian city of Beston, a highway center that would be needed to rapidly move armored units west. The unprepared American defenders of Baston were giving way and in desperate need of reinforcements. With no infantry available, General Eisenhower called upon the paratroopers of the 101st Airborne once more. Upon their arrival, General Anthony McAuliffe, acting commander of the 101st, was given just one order, hold Baston. Joined by infantry and armored units, the 101st assumed defensive positions surrounding the city. Conditions were unbearable. Sub-zero temperatures and lack of supplies left the men freezing. Cloudy weather prevented resupply by air. They were outnumbered five to one and faced massive German bombardment. They were soon completely surrounded, but still, they held. Along the northern perimeter with G Company of the 506th was a veteran of the drops into Normandy and Holland, Jim Pee Wee Martin who found himself trading jumping from planes to digging foxholes through the snow and ice. 22 December, under a flag of truce, German officers approached the Allied lines with a message. The fortune of war is changing, their commander wrote General McAuliffe. With Baston completely surrounded, he demanded the American surrender. McAuliffe replied with just one word, nuts. McAuliffe's response lifted his men's sagging morale, and on Christmas Eve, he offered his men a special message, which included the following. Allied troops are counterattacking in force. We continue to hold Baston. By holding Baston, we assure the success of the Allied armies. We are giving our country and loved ones at home a worthy Christmas present, and being privileged to take part in this gallant feat of arms are truly making for ourselves a Merry Christmas. Soon after, American armored forces broke the German line, ending the siege. The 101st had held Baston, just as ordered. Though heavy combat still remained, victory in the Battle of the Bulge all but assured the Allied triumph in World War II, and much credit for that victory was owed to the men of the 101st Airborne, who at Christmas 1944 obeyed their orders. 
The surviving men of the 101st Airborne Division continued on into Germany, where they helped capture Hitler's mountain retreat, dubbed the Eagle's Nest. Among the first Americans to reach the chalet was 20-year-old Donald Burgett, one of only 11 of his original 200-man company to still be serving at war's end. Not yet old enough to order a beer at home, he readily helped himself to Hitler's wine cellar. Millions of Americans served during World War II. More than 400,000 died securing victory. Exactly 70 years ago, 1944, in the skies over Normandy, on the bridges of Holland, and in the snow of Bastogne, the men of the 101st Airborne Division played their role, suffered their losses, and did their duty.